Hey guys, uh, this is Cliff Dennis with Weld.com coming at you today from my home weld shop here at the Delta Schoolcraft Intermediate School District. And uh, we're going to do a little follow-up video, I guess, in regards to uh, a 4G plate that I welded here uh, beginning of June. Um, we got some comments that sparked some good discussion about a few things. In relation to shielded metal arc welding, Restarts, starts and stops. Um, those of you who weld in the field, I mean, this is a critical skill to know and understand. Anyone who is taking a welding test um, has to master this. And it's something that I really don't think you want to overlook. I'm going to get into some material prep. I'm prepping A36, 38 structural plate steel. Uh, nothing fancy going on here today. I'm going to be using some Bowler 8th inch 6010, some 7018, and we're going to get into it. So I want to take a minute here and I want to talk about machine settings. I'm using a Miller XMT 304. This is a super common machine and it's pretty typical to run across these in the field. Now, I want to have a conversation about Ambridge. Generically speaking, I'm going to run an eighth inch Fox Cell Plus 6010 electrode. And from my personal preferences, running those 332 root openings, 332 landings, I'm liking hotter settings stereotypically. I'm liking that 90, 95 window. Why? Because I prefer to stuff that rod right down in the joint. I prefer to keep constant pressure on the rod and I prefer to drag that right into that root opening without a lot of whip and hesitation. You're gonna find yourself liking a certain setting. You're gonna find yourself getting used to a, a certain land and root opening combo. And that's all gonna take different amperage settings. If I like to put lots of down pressure on my electrode, if I'm trying to increase travel speeds, stereotypically I can increase amperages. And to call out one specific amp, for one person to follow at all times, I don't know if it's completely realistic. So today for my videos, I'm gonna be burning that 90, 95 window. I'm gonna be running that 330 second red opening, 332 landing. I'm not gonna be doing much oscillation, not a lot of whip and pause, unless my keyhole gets a bit excessive, in which case I'll slow down and I'll whip. Is this exact setup gonna run perfect for you? It might not. You're gonna to have to tweak this and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Welding school, vocational programs, that's the time to get in and figure this kind of stuff out. If you like shallow landings, if you like tight road openings, if you like heavier road openings with heavier landings, you're gonna to have to adjust your amperage accordingly. Keep in mind here that we're all within parameters of A, factory manufacturer spec recommendations and you're within amperage ranges on your welding procedure specification. So as long as you're in that window, as long as you're in tolerances for root openings and root faces, man, there's a whole lot of room in there for you to dial in a personal preference. General rule of thumb, burn as hot as you can most of the time, if I'm gonna be, uh, if I'm gonna be blunt, and I think that'll help you.
Okay, here. I've got my first stop with 6010. Now, these vertical lines are my forward centers. I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna remove this coupon and this is gonna be my bend test. So this is within my bend zone, I guess I would call it. And what we've got here is we've got a crater. We have a freeze line left by my last dime, I guess you'd call it. And this is what I kind of want to focus on. Now I'm looking at this area. First of all, most API and ASME codes are going to allow you to use a grinder. It's, it's not bad. If you are allowed to use a grinder and you don't choose to, A, I hope you have the competent skills to understand the difference of what situation calls for what. And B, don't set yourself up short. If you're a new welder, if you're unfamiliar with some of the welding procedures, if you're if you're unsure about if the weld's gonna be NDT tested, you know, I, I recommend that you take advantage of that grinder. So what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for craters in here. In these craters, cracks like to form. Um, sometimes you can catch slag in those craters. And in restarts, that's where you can catch slag. You can get slag entrapments and slag inclusions. So definitely take the time to examine that crater. In a physical restarting scenario, which is what I'm gonna do here in just a moment. First of all, I'm arcing up in my weld zone. I'm arcing up before, um, before my restart, and I'm doing that for a couple reasons. One, I wanna get this electrode hot. I wanna get this electrode up to temperature so I'm, I don't have a cold start, and that's gonna also preheat the base metal slightly. I think that's a little bit more relevant in a root, but in any start and stop scenario, I think arcing up prior to your stop and falling back into your stop is always good practice. I'm using this last freeze line here that you can see. I'm using that as the guide for my electrode. When I'm making these whip and pause motions with the 6010, I'm making that first teardrop and I'm letting my flux follow that last freeze line. And that's going to give me a really solid uh, weld deposition on my crater and that's gonna allow me to restart seamlessly and, and continue on from there. So if this is my four inch line, my restart is right there. And you can see just a little bit of a mound of, of metal there, but overall I would call that a pretty solid restart. guys let's talk about the 7018 restart a lot of things we got to worry about the 6010 restarts are kind of universal so again i've got this crater where i came out of my stop on my 7018 and i need that restart here again this is my four inch center so this is going to be within my bend zone might even be on the bend zone most people are thinking man i do all i can not to put restarts and bend zones on welding tests. Well, I'm trying to make a point here. Let's see how it goes. So again, like my 6010, my 7018, I'm gonna arc up prior um, to my stop. I'm gonna get that rod hot and I'm gonna come back into my crater and I'm gonna follow that last freeze line with my flux as kind of my guide to make that first teardrop. That first teardrop, that second hesitation it's gonna take for you to make that little radius on that freeze line is gonna give that enough time to fuse properly and take off. Um, real quick, let's talk about 7018 for a hot minute. Um, I'm burning 332, you might notice that by just me pointing out that rod. Originally I was gonna burn eighth inch, but I think it's a little bit more realistic to run 332. If you're putting in an eighth inch rut, you're in the field, you probably set your machine. That machine may be hundreds and hundreds of feet away 
and you're not always going to have the luxury to run down flights and flights of stairs and chase miles and miles of lead to tweak your amperage. So I'm going to keep that 90, 95 window I've got my machine set to. I'm going to make a seamless transition to 7018 without touching my amperage, and I'm going to, I'm going to continue on with the rest of the test. Hey guys, so I guess in closing, I wanted to wrap up with a few things. These starts and stops really are something important. I really don't think you can hide from a bend test. Um, these all cleaned up really nice. They bent kind of how I expected them to. And we didn't have any notable discontinuities. And when restarts are done correctly, um, that's what you can expect. You're gonna have to restart um nothing's ever going to be perfect starts and stops are, are part of the process and working through them and dialing in that technique is, is super critical what i don't want to do is i don't want to go out and recommend one specific way for one specific situation for for everyone out there i think if you're coming out of welding school if you've got that new job it's always smart to be safe it's always better to be safe than sorry. Um, prepping a restart, I don't think anyone's ever gonna knock you because you did it. And I don't think anyone's ever gonna call you dumb because you took the extra two minutes it takes to grind and feather that restart out. Leave comments, um, spark more discussion. If, if you got something you didn't see, if you got something you wanna see further, let me know, let weld.com know, we'll get at it. And uh, hopefully you guys took something away from this. I always appreciate talking to you guys. Thanks for tuning in um, from my hometown uh, weld shop here in Escanaba, Michigan, the Delta Schoolcraft Intermediate School District Little Weld Lab. It's not perfect, but uh, this, is, this is where I work daily. And uh, it's a good place to work and it's a good place to be. Talk to you guys soon. Like, subscribe, follow weld.com. Again, I'm Cliff Danis. See you around.